So for the last uh, however many years, I've promised myself I was gonna buy a Porsche. And I decided that now is a pretty good time. And there's been some rumors kicking around that this car has been for sale. And there have been rumors. And the thing is that they're all complete bull And this car's not for sale. Chris is never selling this car. He promised himself that he wouldn't sell it. And he said, I will be buried in this car before anyone else gets it. So I didn't buy this. I bought this. So I didn't buy the RWB, I bought myself a Carrera Cup car and a brand new Futura trail. I'm gonna get rid of the drag car and just go to the circuit instead. That's also bullshit. This is my friend Adam's car and he is also the guy that brings Futura trailers into Australia. We'll talk to him a bit later, but um, I bought this. So yeah, I didn't buy a Cup car, I bought a Porsche Cayenne. Or however the hell you pronounce it. Uh, Cayenne, Cayenne, whatever, Pepper. This is my new tow car and I really love it. And big thanks to my mate Stewie, who you would have seen swinging around on Channel 9 on an Australian Ninja Warrior. He was the guy that told me all about it. So Stewie's coming here in a couple of minutes. We're gonna put this inside and talk all about the pros and cons of buying an old Porsche Cayenne, Cayenne, one of these. Here he comes, the Furbinator hits the roof, hits the buzzer, you betcha! So obviously Chris's car is the cool car here and that's the one we really want to look at. But um, this is my mate Stewie, you might have seen him on Australian Ninja Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason I've got Stewie here is because when I was going to buy this car, I wasn't nervous because I'm a mechanic by trade so I know a bit about cars but you don't know every single car so I was like mm, not too sure. So you've owned a couple of them and everything you told me was really good. So, and that's why I ended up buying and I'm actually really happy I bought it now. But um, tell me, like, yeah, let's walk around and have a look. And well, really this, uh, this is a 2008 model. So um, it's a couple of generations in from what Porsche originally designed the vehicle in probably the late 90s, early 2000s for the 955 model, this is a 957. Yep. And a lot of the major issues that they would have had in the earlier models have been resolved by this model. Mm. Um, and then they upgraded the engine to the 4.8 from the original 4.5 that was in the 955. But a lot of the architecture still, it remains the same. Yep. Um, so they're very well known for being very reliable um, and very stout vehicles on road for safety and you know touring and things like that. And like uh, aesthetically though, they did facelift the front. What year did they do that? That happened around about 2005, 2006, I think was the update from uh, the 955 shape uh, yep. to the 957, which has sort of got a little bit more pointy corner in the headlights. Yep. The 955 looks more like a 996, 997 front end when you really look at them. And then when you look through the interiors, you really see the you know early 2000s, 911 uh, features and indicator stalks and things like that. And I guess so, like pros and cons of these cars, I mean. Well, you want to start with the pros, obviously. The pro is that you now own a Porsche. Yes, so, yeah. I did promise myself, I'm not going to say my age, but I did promise myself yeah. that I'd buy a Porsche at some stage. So now you can tell everyone. There was supposed to be a 911, I, but you know. I remember my first Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it is a heavily depreciated vehicle. Yeah. That's one, that, well, that's one of the positives. And on that, I did read up that this would have been about 145 grand brand new. Yeah, that would be about mm. right. Yeah. Mm. So when you look at, you know, that as a percentage uh, depreciation over um, the number of years, it, it's heavily depreciated. Mm. You know, multiple owners or, you know, if it's only been one has taken a big hit um, on that. And really you're coming along a couple of years later and capitalizing with that same luxury and um, I guess badge value mm. by, you know, only spending sub $20,000 on one of these now. What I will say about these early KNs versus, you know, if you compared it to some of the other early vehicles from the early 2000s, like luxury vehicles, that is like, you know, if you look at BMWs and some of the like really early Mercedes, these interiors, I wouldn't say they're timeless, but they've held up very well. Mm. You know, all of the materials and everything that Porsche used in the early 2000s have really held up. They don't fall apart and the plastics don't tend to snap and break like a lot of the BMWs and all that sort of stuff. So that's one thing you can count on when you do buy one of these that um, they really, like they hold up. Even the seats in this thing, considering mm. its age, they look more or less like something that's done 20,000 Ks now. Yeah, and I mean, even I didn't realise until after I bought it they had heated seats in it, which is awesome because it was quite cold last night. But <laughs> I mean, this car, it's only done 143,000 Ks, so it's in pretty good nick. But 
It's got awesome stereo, like Bose speakers, all that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, this one's actually, for a KNS, which is not the top model, it's actually fitted out. Someone's ticked almost every option on it. So um, normally the KNSs didn't come with things like, as a standard, they didn't come with like wood grain. They didn't come with like heated seats. They didn't come with the airbag suspension. Yeah, um, all of those things are like added options that someone's come along and actually ticked the boxes, you know, which probably would have um, maybe even added $20,000 to the retail price. Mm. And it's funny, I mean, like with the airbags in it, like this has got 22 inch wheels on it, so it does look pretty cool. I mean, it's like it's like a tough soccer mum car. Definitely. It does sit nice when it's sitting right down. Like you can't drive it at this level because this is a loading level. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, loading level. So you only mm. normally get to about 10K an hour at the loading level and I think they pop up about another 20 mil. The good thing as well is you have the ability to change um, with that airbag option on these. You have that ability to change um, the dampening settings too. Yeah. So when I had my 955 turbo and I would tow with it, uh, I would leave it in a normal level and it would automatically self level with the weight of the trailer. But then you could take it out of the comfort mode and then just up at one on the uh, dampening settings. And it sort of just firmed the ride up enough that it became really stable with the trailer. This is a whole package. Like I'm just, yep. And the other thing too is uh, the whole main reason I bought this, because I've got the Falcon, uh, which we've got some other plans for yet. So um, we'll get into that later when that all happens. But this is three and a half ton tow rating, yep. which is awesome because, you know, then I know it's like, it's even my, my Land Cruiser being a 94 model, they're only two and a half. So it just scrapes in, but um, three and a half ton tow rating. That's and the equivalent of it's a six speed, you know, it's got really well engineered transmission components, diff components, all that sort of stuff. Mm. So in terms of like, talk to actually move two and a half plus ton, mm. you know, you go and put that behind, you know, even just a standard 80 series, it won't even move. Mm. You really struggle yeah. where this thing will carry on at 110, no worries with two and a half plus ton on it. And yeah. you know, you're never going to go, oh, it's not like it's even, the, it's not like the weight's even there. You're still going to know the weight's there, but it'll be a solid, you know, just carry on and, you know, somewhat reasonable fuel economy while you're doing it too. There's definitely some sort of price you have to pay though for owning a vehicle that's depreciated, mm. you know, that heavily over a number of years. And, you know, you have to acknowledge that there are going to be some additional maintenance costs mm. and things that you're going to have to keep up on top of. Mm. But the fantastic thing about all of that is that because Porsche made this, uh, you know, in conjunction with Volkswagen Audi Group, they share so much of the platform in terms yeah. of suspension bushes and components like that, mm. that the component costs for these vehicles is not generally that high, unless it's maybe some of the very specific Porsche components, but a lot of them are shared with Volkswagen Audi. And because the sheer number of vehicles that are on road, not only in KN, but in Q7 and in Touareg, the, the cost of those components and the availability is so high, mm. it's just not expensive. I'm glad you said it because like the amount of people that Cayenne, it's like Cayenne, Cayenne, K, <laughs> and then Touareg, 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 Touareg. <laughs> I've heard. I'm just like because the other day I was looking at some stuff on the net and I'm like, instantly it went to the Volkswagen forum and I'm like, oh, I guess it's the same. And then you look and like electronically they're all the same and yep. bits and pieces. But yeah, getting into that too. Other than that, you know, what are the main things that you've seen that's going wrong with this? Because I did see the one that was for sale and it had every single check engine light under the sun in yeah. it because it had some module fail. Yeah, so the, obviously um, they're on the forums and everything, there's a lot of knowledge um, about the common issues that can go wrong with these vehicles and things mm. to sort of look out for. Um, some of them I've never experienced, but uh, depending on the climate that your vehicle's been in and, and the way it's been looked after, um, there's multiple things you need to look out for. And probably one of the first ones is um, within the, within the uh, sunroofs, and um, even the roof rack drains and everything, they can quite easily get clogged up uh, if they're parked under trees, et cetera. Yep. Um, and what happens is the drains that run down uh, through your A pillars, for example, will be blocked. And what happens is you just end up with water getting in underneath the roof liner. And the result of that is that it'll come down under the dash and where your fuse boxes are, which is sort of what I was trying to explain to you the other day, the fuse box basically just gets doused in water if it's raining or you get, yeah. you know, you wash your car or something like that. And then all of a sudden you can get a whole bunch of corrosion happening in there, which will just throw engine lights, you know, until you work out what the issue is. Um, and generally the telltale of that is you'll find moisture under the floor mats um, in them. And it's as simple as just pouring some water into the, um, into the drains to actually check 
So all right, is it coming yeah. out the bottom? And that's, that's um, exactly what I did. Yeah, yeah and, so. and then you can mm. basically just pull the wheel liners off and, mm. and check, all right, is it draining out? Mm. And the other thing I did too, because I was a bit conscious of that, was like there was no moisture anywhere, so I was like, that's fine. But I poured warm water in there and it came straight out the bottom like great, but then I also got like a thin but really long zip tie yep. and just fed it into the tube, just almost like a dipstick to pull it out to see if it came out dirty yeah. and it was clean. So I was like, oh, at least there's no junk in there. Yeah, my, uh, my friend just bought a 955 and uh, his were actually blocked. Mm. Um, and I just poured a bit of moisture, a bit of water in there to, to check where the moisture was going. Mm. Um, I actually used compressed air to actually blow it out because it wasn't that badly blocked. It was still dropping through and it just, Un, it just un, um, unloaded out the bottom just because yeah. there was a bit of leaves and stuff like that in there. Mm. And you know, you can even put a bit of WD-40 or something down there to make it a little bit slippery so the dirt doesn't stick to it. It'll yeah. never last forever. Best thing is you know, to make sure that little uh, eyelets at the bottom are actually cut open a little bit bigger than they used to be from factory. Yeah, and I did see that on a few tutorials because I mean, typical YouTube, like if you want to know anything on a car, you type it in yeah. and 99, 10 times out of 100, it's like it's a Russian guy or a... <laughs> Or uh, what's the other one? Yeah, and, and I went straight on there and this Russian yes. guy with this super thick accent going, oh, this is the daylights. And I was like, <laughs> but yeah, it, there's um, so it many actually these... helped because he said exactly where the fuse was that we yeah, found. Yeah, there's so many of these in like Russia mm. because it feels cheap there. Yeah. Oh, and actually, so the sunroof, is that standard on these? I believe all of them actually came with a sunroof. It could be wrong, but mm. um, I don't think I've ever seen one without a sunroof. So I think it was pretty much a standard option. Because it's funny, I almost I didn't really buy this sight unseen because I've seen this car so many times because I bought it off a friend. But it wasn't until I actually went there, I paid the money and picked it up. And I'm like, oh crap, it's got a sunroof. That's awesome. Like <laughs> it's, yeah, because I, I don't think I've, to the best of my knowledge, I've ever owned a car with a sunroof. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you know, it's Australia now, so you get sunburned walking outside <laughs> for five seconds. But at night time, it's kind of cool. But I mean, other than um, having all my camera crap and everything in the boot, the it's got heaps of boot space. The back seat's actually quite yeah. roomy as well you know yeah. I, I mean I drove mine to Melbourne with five people and five and and luggage and mm. you know we were all quite comfortable five adults grown adults that is it's uh, like a, a, a it's half my wardrobe in here at the moment like <laughs> and you too can have one of these Hoon TV hoodies so. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah anyway you can get that on hoongear.com um no terrible plug but um yeah I mean even the back kind of looks, I mean, it's got a tow bar there. That's not tough looking, but it's got those two big pipes that come out the back. Yeah. But the even the thing... quality, you look at the quality of like the way these uh, pipes have been made mm. and you know, you think, yes, it's just a family SUV, but mm. you look at that quality and you think, okay, 2008, you're spending $160,000 or whatever it's going to be with all the options on a vehicle. Porsche's gone, we need to make sure this stuff's like properly engineered. It's not yeah. just some like, dodgy Chinese looking exhaust or whatever yeah. underneath. It's like this amazing mandrel bent, like really high quality exhaust that will never rust out. Yeah. It's like, that's the sort of stuff where you notice with these vehicles, how much engineering went into actually producing all of these components in, you know, the design of them, but then the material qualities as well is so high. And, I, and I'm sort of trying to avoid going down the path of being OCD with it and going, oh, no, I can just <laughs> fix that and fix this. I mean, I know there's a couple of uh, rash marks on the wheels from previous owners, so I just went and touched them up. But like things like this back trim yeah. here, it's all, that's your luggage bloody scraper or whatever you call it. But um, that's Next. got a few dents in it and I'm like, hmm, I wonder how much they are. <laughs> so, yeah. But it's, um, it's reasonably clean for what it is. And the other thing is too, are these standard or is yep, that? That's a standard, like it's not a um, aftermarket option or anything like that. Yeah. They did vary depending on models, um, but I don't believe that that's uh, like uh, any different to any of the other 957s. Yep. The 955 one was a little bit different, didn't have this cutout in here. Yep. Um, there is actually a couple of cool lips you can buy aftermarket that fit on them as well. Oh, um, yes. It's got a little bit of a kick on it. It's yeah, a little bit of a spoiler, yeah. but yeah. The other thing that's um, a common issue with these, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a KN or whether it's a, a, a Touareg or um, a Q7, is the, the gas struts that hold the tailgate up. Mm. Um, it's just a common like common thing that they, they only last a few years. Yeah. Um, you can tell the strength of these ones is like okay. Um, but but what, yeah, yeah. what happens is there's, there's two sets of gas struts in here. Uh, one's for the glass and yep. then one is actually for um, the actual whole hatch. Yep. Um, and, you know, just a common thing with gas struts, but because 
The glass does open independently, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. The... Yeah, it, and it's funny because I've never even done it. No, it's no. almost a useless like. Yeah, there you so go. I've never actually, actually even done that. It's my own car. So. It's just the mm. you know. They, they, I don't know why they ever even thought that you'd well, need that. And I don't think the previous owner's ever done it. No. Because <laughs> this car did get detailed before I bought it and yeah. it's full of junkier. Well, so. they probably I don't didn't. even know how you open that, so that's interesting. Oh, yeah, so it's underneath the... Underneath the yeah, um, yeah, you learn something. Well, I thought that the other day. I'm like, I wonder if this opens separately. Just oh, listen listen to the noise it makes, though, when, when it opens. Ready? It just sounds like really high quality, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> I, even I love the fact that when you shut the boot, you just shut it. And then it sucked yeah. itself in, like, like, like a lot of the new year. But cars. like 2003 was the first model that they released. None of that's changed since 2003. Mm. You know, so you look at, like, I don't know what other, like, cheap SUVs were available, but, like, it, this, the, the, the quality of those parts is amazing to me for 2003 when they were probably designed in 1999, you know. Mm. And, I mean, the other thing is, too, it's, like, it's funny because, like, I'm used to my Land Cruiser, which is a bit rowdy, but this thing sounds super quiet when you're driving it, but yep. then outside it... Apparently it's not too bad. Yeah. So it just must have so much sound ending in it. That they've it's got just... rasp, like a real raspy like mm. exhaust note, particularly in the naturally aspirated ones. The turbo mm. ones are very quiet. Mm. Um, the like with the, the turbos just shut everything up so much um, and you almost wouldn't even know it was a V8 from the outside. So, mm. you, you know, they kind of need a bit of an aftermarket exhaust or some exhaust modifications um, where the naturally aspirated ones, the factory exhaust system, it, it's like, got a raspy enough yeah. note to it that you can just leave it yeah well i mean i guess you know we could go on all day crapping on about this thing i, I mean actually while i'm here as well i love the fact that it runs on 95 because 98 expensive as hell at the moment <laughs> um but um do you want to go for driving it you can have a drive sure tell me what you think yeah yeah cool all right so mr gopro hopefully the audio is pretty good on this but um so how does this compare to your last one that you own so Mine, last one was a 955. This is the 957, so a couple of years later. And uh, one of the good things about going to the 957 over the 955 is instantly, you notice the steering is a lot lighter. And I feel like maybe that's an improvement that Porsche made after, um, you know, feedback from customers for the first few years. Um, and it's like, you know, it's one-handed operation. You can, it's so comfortable to drive mm. and it's a big difference between the two. That's probably the number one thing. Um, other than that, you know, they do have very similar traits inside. The, the stereo buttons, all those controls, everything's the same. The dash is all the same. Um, in the KNS, which is what this one is, um, there's a few features that are missing from the turb, like from the turbo dashes. The turbo dash has got color in it. Um, and there's just a few other little features that are available, um, you know, things like uh, trip computers and stuff like that are a little bit different. But, like, you know, you being a passenger, you've driven this for a couple of days now, mm. you know, it's, it's super comfortable being airbag. Yeah. You know, it's a completely different ride quality to what you get out of a coil spring. So... And I mean, it, right now it's on the, like, not the low, low it, setting, but it's on the low setting. Yeah. And it feels quite nice. I mean, it does feel the bumps a bit, but yeah, you know, a couple of times when the road's been crap, I've jacked it up to like the. So what are the modes? It's like terrain level, and then there's. Yes. Is it like super terrain or? Yeah. So you've got uh, you've got like a like you have the loading level. So the super super low. There's yep. five settings. The super super low is really only loading. So as an example, you got something really heavy you want to put in the boot, but you don't want to bend down. Um, then you know you can drop it down to that but over about 10k an hour it'll pop up to the normal level yep. and then when you have uh, the opposite end of the scale at the very top say you wanted to wade through some water because you're actually going to take it off-road which you know nowadays that might be true back when Porsche originally developed this vehicle I don't think anyone was taking them off-road apart from the media but in that top one you have the same thing over about 10k an hour it will actually um, it'll actually you know uh, raise it up right above and then um, you know you can actually wade through some water so, and so what do you reckon yeah it drives fantastic for something that's um, you know creeping up on 20 years old in, in engineering and things like that um, the the way that they drive is, is better than you know a vehicle that's brand new maybe like a modern Haval or you know some one of these horrible vehicles you pay sort of similar money for um, oh, they do have like 17 year warranties. Yeah, right? they do have 17 year warranties. But, you know, that's part of the excitement of owning a vehicle like this is that, you know, 
what's going to happen is he going to start in the morning you know these types of things these vehicles are very reliable but you're always going to have that one thing aren't you where you feel like you know okay something could go wrong and you're probably unlikely to get stranded but mm. you know, there's going to be little things that are going to um that are going to happen which you're going to have to try and work your way through yeah yep so i mean yeah all in all i'm pretty happy with this and i could have because the main reason i bought this was as a tow car yeah but um it's nice too because i haven't had a car with a back seat in it for a few years now yeah so i can actually go pick up my parents both of them yeah <laughs> yeah rather than my you know, 86 year old mum climbing into the back of my land yeah for sure um but it's and just... you know you want to go out and have dinner or park somewhere nice or something like that you know mm. you could actually take it and drive it where you know the land cruise is fun cars and coffee and all that sort of stuff but mm. um you know when you want to go drive somewhere nice you might not want to Mm. take that type of vehicle good turning circle on these two that's um, another positive thing I really good for last night it's ridiculous really good for reversing trailers mm. that's what we've done. but um yeah all right well thanks man and thanks for your advice on this no worries and, um, yeah and i guess the other thing is too i'm on a couple of KN groups on facebook now which have been really good so if you're looking at buying one of these you can either call him or just jump on the KN group <laughs> All right, so yeah, like as much as I'd like to own one of these and, you know, maybe one day, um, this isn't my car, this is Adam's car. This bloke right here. My mate, the diesel mechanic. Howdy. How's it going? Good. So, I mean, firstly, like, this thing's on the trailer, so let's talk about that. This is yep. your business. So apart from your normal yep. diesel business, what have we got here? Yep, so the trailer holds 1,900 kilo. So combined mass, including the trailer, is two and a half tonne. It's obviously a low trailer, so it's a low load trailer. So in order to lower it, do you want me to show you how to lower it? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. All right, we'll do it now. So you undo these latches on each side. Yep. And then over here we have the control system. And inside here you have all your controls. So the new updated version now is obviously on. You have a remote which incorporates both the winch and the lowering of the trailer now. Yeah, well. So to turn the remote on, you hold the two top buttons for five seconds. You can also operate it from inside the panel and you can either go up and down from here or you can do it neatly and just do it with a remote. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty simple. Anyone who follows this guy on Instagram knows that his cars are never like more than a half an inch off the ground. <laughs> So. <laughs> hey, I'm getting old. I've, I've raised them a bit since, but yeah. <laughs> the good thing about the 991, you can actually disconnect that lip um, because the lips on the race cars are the main struggle point. Yep. But depending on the incline and a decline of the hill that you're putting the trailer on, that lip can actually go stay on the car and it can go off and on. Yep. Um, but the same thing to go up and same thing as the winch. So if I wanted to operate the winch, I can just press in. Yep. And the winch is done. Yeah, awesome. So, back up. So, and now the car itself, like, this is a previous generation. Yeah, so this is a 991.1 without ABS. It runs a 3.8, naturally aspirated. Not a huge power vehicle, but the balance of it, obviously the weight and the handling of it is impeccable. Well, I had a 996 before, and yeah, so I'm keen to get back out with this on the east circuit at tail and bend just to compare them both yep and that's what i'll be doing a video on that later on and so what's the history of this car do you know who the previous yeah so it was, it was it and... tom taplin's old ride which he had a fair few bengals in but yep. um obviously he's learnt and he's gone to a 991 1.2 now yep. um but now obviously he got rid of this i got this for passenger rides friends to share it with hence why i put the seat in it now um so we can do passenger rides and whatnot Yep. Um, but yeah, it's cleaned up all right. So the, the livery was done by Sign Color and it was um, then applied to the vehicle by the Vinyl Touch, uh, which, yeah, it's turned out really, really well. I'm happy with it. Oh, it looks awesome. I mean, obviously, with you being the Aussie Future of Trailers dealer, then yeah. this is your promo car for Yeah, it, that's but... right. Yeah, and they're on board with it too. They're really good about it, Futura. Um, mm. Yeah, so you want to see it go up? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's it. Nice. So then you'll just go around and you'll flick all these locks back down. In the latest model, they've upgraded the locks. They've upgraded the actual lift system now, so it doesn't run like a little level ride switch. Yep. Um, so it's far more improved. 
Futura, the team, really listen really well. So any advice dealers give them, they actually alter and they, they change. Yep. They actually a company that makes changes and adapts, which is great. I dig the swing away number plate, that's cool. Yes, that's pretty cool. So obviously you lift that up and you can actually position it there and tow like that if you wish. Oh yeah, cool. Um, so yeah. Mm. Nice, so moving forward, you mentioned the other day that, I mean, yeah, you got some junk AM crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah just some junk. Um, yep. Yeah, you should have a Porsche Cayenne. Yeah. <laughs> but you do have a bunch of other really cool cars. And you mentioned that you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel. I am. I've been hassled for ages, um, well, for a very long time, to start a channel. It's just getting the time to do it. But I'm going to bite the bullet and start creating one. Yeah. Nice. So, so you'll see it soon. I'm going to make sure he does it like really quickly so that I can put the link below. Even if it's just got like you doing a selfie video on that, we'll just yeah. get it up there. Yeah. So the link will be below. I'll put the link too for his Instagram on there. You can check out. He's got a Hakusuka GDR replica. Yep. And oh, you VK, can look yeah. VK with yep. tyres this wide in it. FD. Yeah. I've got, got a lot of toys but don't get the time to use them. But I think the channel is going to enable me to get out there and use them. So I mm. think that's, that's time. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well. Easy. Thank you for your time. Thank I'm you. going to go find Chris and we're going to actually go look at this okay. really sexy one. No worries. Porsche. So, I mean, Adam's cup car, super cool car, but I mean, this is is cool. Chris, your car. Tell me all about this car. What was it when you got it and how did this all come about? I mean, we saw the videos of it, like all the behind the scenes and stuff like that when it was built, but what was the whole driving force of you buying this? So, I've always wanted to have a Porsche that is special you know special not only to me but just to everybody in general because i was that young kid at the car shows when you're younger who was looking at all the cars and people would let me go and sit in them and you know i was really brought into the whole scene i suppose you'd want to call it for having nice cars and having those sorts of things and after working pretty hard for a few years i decided i'd treat myself and buy this which was a 1996 uh, c2 porsche so it's a 993 model uh, it's the last of the air cooled and uh, when I bought it, yeah, it had some work that needed to be done. Didn't have windows in it. Uh, front bar, rear bar was off. But given what I had planned for the car, which is obviously the RWB body kit, that wasn't too much of an issue for me. So it took about a year uh, from purchase to when it was built out at the bend at Jam Motorsport, which is fairly quick these days where you're talking about RWB kits because you're waiting about two years now with post-COVID life and the car sun having to catch up with everything. So. I decided that I wanted to go the RWB route with this. So I talked to Churn from RWB Australia and he said, what do you want to do? So there are some additions to this, like the canards on the front here, the flexible front lip that allows you to go in and out of the uh, driveways a little bit easier, a little bit more personal choices. Uh, obviously I wanted to stick with it being a white car as well. Um, I, I did want to have a brighter color to start with and then I sort of fell in love with it. It was a white car to start with. And I figured that I'd just update the color to the more modern white. It's got a nice blue interior in it. A little bit different, but I reckon it's just that classic Porsche color. As for the engine, it's all stock in this one. Uh, I do have some go fast bits for it, but I haven't decided which route I want to go down with that. Purely also with a twin turbo system is kind of a, a rear bumper delete, which Australia is not going to accept. <laughs> and uh, the supercharger route, I probably need to lose the duck tail. So I don't really want to do that either. I'm just happy to keep plodding along with it the way that it is. And I guess, so the, the whole RWB thing, like what's the entry point into doing that? It's a fairly exclusive thing, like not everyone's got one. Did you have to sort of like apply to it or was there like a... You kind of do and you kind of don't. So mm. in Australia, um, because we're so limited with the amount of people who would actually do this, Churn likes to have a chat to you first and just see the type of person that you are with uh, cars. I mean, these are attractive to a lot of different types of people, uh, but we're kind of a pretty big family. If anyone needs anything, we're all happy to help and chip out. I'm heading over to Victoria to have a look at a couple of the builds later on this year and over to Western Australia to have a look at those as well. Yep. Because I've met those guys. Um, one of the people who's gonna build a car I've met and he's um, talked to me about the car a number of times. So uh, yeah, just happy to sort of do, go that extra mile, I suppose, rather than just having the right to buy the body kit because the body kit is pretty expensive including mm -hmm. flying the Kaisan out all comes in the cost of the kit but these days uh, it's, I reckon it would convert to probably nearly 50 grand by the time you paint it and yep. everything like that so uh, I think that that's pretty cheap to get a bit of commissioned artwork. And I guess like you said before like you didn't buy 
you can justify a bit by saying oh, it wasn't a mint cow to start off with, so you've bought something that you've considered a project. Yeah, personally, I wouldn't have liked to have done it to a, an Australian delivered car that was in mint condition because I, that part of me is the Porsche purist side of me. I do like seeing those cars stay the same way. Yeah. But this one here, I like to think that I've rescued it a little bit. Uh, the previous owner to me had every, every intention of doing that himself, but yep. um, family situation stopped him from having to do that or being able to do that. So um, I let him know when I was purchasing the car that this was going to be the plan for it. And he was uh, really supportive for, of it. So mm. um, I do still have to make it up to see, see him and show him the car in the completed form again. So yeah, nice. um, looking forward to doing that one day. And like the kit itself, is this a specific design or name or something this? Because he's done a few different styles. This isn't a full heavenly kit because the heavenly kit does come out about another inch on the sides. Probably not too conducive to be driven on the Australian roads. This is wide enough in our lanes. It's not the fastest car, but this car for me isn't about going fast. It's about driving it, enjoying it, cruising around. Uh, it's still got the ability to keep up with some very fast cars, mm. but uh, you know, it's a Tiptronic cruiser for me. So it's got factory turbo seats, which are super, super comfortable to sit in. Uh, I've retrimmed the um, front trunk on it as well. Because when I first built the car, it was a um, car that was on air ride suspension. Yep. And so I had a really big tank in here that uh, needed to be centerpieced a little bit, but now it's out of there. It just looks like a couch. Yeah, no. So, yeah. You could like sit in there when you need to you know, chill. Yeah, I've, I've had a few people mention that, but if they've seen me move, me getting in there, I might not get back out, so. And yeah. talk to me about the wheels. Like, um, they're pretty special wheels as well. What's the deal with them? Yeah, so they're Rotiform ZRH-Ts. Uh, they were brand new when I first ordered them. They had them on the website in this exact color and style, but yep. the only difference was that the, obviously these are very deep dish. Um, they're mm. minus 16s on the front, minus 46 on the rear. I, I get that mixed up a couple of times, but that is the offset on these. Um, but yeah, I, I love the fact that they're pretty much a one-off. Unless you're gonna build an IWB or something with crazy offset, then you're not gonna see them like this. Yeah. Uh, usually they come in like a 20 inch wheel and they're full faced. So they do look just that little bit different, um, but I've had nothing but compliments on these. Uh, I'm sure they're not everyone's style, but they were kind of a, a very modern version of the telly dials, I yep. thought, which is why I sort of selected these ones. But yeah, just for cruising around on, they do the job. They show off the big brakes that are on the car. I'm happy yeah. about that. Color complements the car really nicely as well. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, and that dish, I mean, that's, you know, yeah. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Pretty cool, it's like. Yeah, mm. and the matte with the uh, polished finish as well. Mm. Um, the, the stencils that are on the tires, I'll let them go so that they kind of match that little bit of uh, bronzy look on them, a little mm. bit more racy. Um, it's no point in driving around with bright white stickers on there, in my opinion. Nice. Yeah. Well, um, how do you feel about taking me out for a spin in it? It's no worries at all. Nice. Yeah, no worries at all. Do you want to drive it? I wouldn't say no. <laughs> I wouldn't say no. Yeah, that's all right, no worries. We'll go for a bit of a spin. Funny, these are almost the same as the Cayenne. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how long have you had this? So I bought it in 2019. Okay, so it's only a short amount of time. Yeah, so it took um, about nine, ten, nearly 10 months between when I first purchased it and the uh, build itself. So uh, pretty quick, as I said, but that's because I'd already had all the ducks lined in a row for what I wanted to have with the car. Chan didn't want me to place the order until I had the car sorted. Yep. So as soon as I purchased the car, I called him up and said, I'm on, let's go. So, yeah. It's definitely, it's funny, like, so with me buying what I've bought, and this video is a bit of a piss take really, but it's turned out to be kind of a cool video because like here I'm going, oh, we'll do a video and feature Chris's car. And whilst I'm not thrashing this, like you said, this is more of a cool cruiser, so it's, Nice as we are cruising. I mean, we are in the back streets of an industrial area, which we won't mention. Correct. In Adelaide, um, somewhere. And um, yeah, I'm driving your RWB, which is super cool. Yeah, like I said, man, I'm, I'm happy to let people just experience things like this, you know. That's no skin off my nose. Um, I'm happy to see the smile on people's faces with it as well. 
I got a mate who's petrified of even driving the car just because um, he knows what it means to me in relation to what I've worked for. But yeah, I want him to drive it. I'm looking forward to the day that he actually takes it for a spin. And what's it like to drive? Are you constantly like looking over your shoulder, making sure that people aren't following you or that are going to crash into you? Or... Uh, the following part happens at night time, certainly, yeah, a lot yeah. more. Uh, especially over in Victoria, I found that that was a bit more, like I said, it actually happened a couple of times. Um, and so then, yeah, you're not taking the most direct route home, so you make sure that no one's following you. Um, but here in Adelaide, the people know know me enough and the scene's small enough that, um, you know, I'd like to think that I can just relax a little bit more. Yeah. Driving as for the, the most stressful thing about this thing is staying away from the curbs, because uh, I'd hate to think that it's going to cost to replace one of these rims. Oh if yeah. I got a rash one, so uh, yeah. But I've driven trucks most of my uh, working career, so as a result of that, I've got pretty good spatial awareness, so I know what I'm going to fit through and what I'm not. Yeah. Um, or what's too risky to even take that chance, so I won't do it. Gonna park here and like, like uh, Gene Nagata, Potato Jet once said in the video where he featured the three foot monsters, he's like, better pull over and get a thumbnail. Ah, yeah. Mm. So, uh, we'll just shut it off for a sec. Turn it off. Up to you. The key is very similar to mine. Yeah. Does it go all the way? Or? Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just old. Oh, it's one of those. Yeah, okay. I guess it is, um, 96, so it's... It's yeah. just as things started to happen with them, so Tiptronic just started to happen with it. Mm. Um, you know, it's got, it's got the nice sunroof and everything in it, which I think the majority of them actually came with sunroofs. It was an option, but everyone did it. And this button here? That one's for the rear wing, so the rear wing used to come up as oh. you get into 100 k's now. But it will now give you a warning because that rear wing's not on there, so the sensor's disconnected. Nice. And I really dig, like this is a, you need like the really dirty 80s business suit for this, or 90s because it's got a tape deck in it. Yeah, so I've had that many young kids jump in this car who are all 2000 born and later, and I've jumped in and they're going, what's this? What does this do? I'm like, you are kidding me, right? Mm. Like, well, this is the oldest car I've ever sat in. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's a 1996, it's not even that old, man. But apparently it is. This is a, a classic, so. <laughs> nice, all right, well, let's get nope. a thumbnail shot. No worries. So, I mean, um, yeah, so how's your Sunday, everyone else? I'm just here with Chris. <laughs> cruising the back streets in a RWB Porsche. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than this. No, this is good very weather. Cool. I mean, it's, for an air cool. we're in an industrial area, so I can't look cool. I don't have my cool sunglasses on, but um, yeah. If we're just cruising around the bay right now, like people checking us out and stuff like that. Maybe you can do that, Savo. I'll follow you around with nobody looking at me in my cane. <laughs> Never know, mate. <laughs> Never know. The ladies might be looking at a uh, a nice bloke in the can and go, oh, let me some of that. He could really drop my kids off to school in <laughs> I that. I could put my kids in the back of that car for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> what time my race car? Yeah. Well, if they've, if they've got a race car, give me their number. Now, um, yeah, more importantly though, if you want to follow Chris and his exploits and what he gets up to with this car and all the other RWB guys, you can go to his Instagram, which is... Uh, RWB underscore Ronan. Um, and I've also got another one on the side for some car storage which is coming up soon which is the combustion collection so yeah it should be good nice well thanks for watching i hope this wasn't too long and boring for you but um more importantly if you're looking at buying a porsche cane uh, some good advice there from stewie but also like i said jump on the uh, facebook groups because there's a pretty uh, clever people there too thanks for watching cheers like comment subscribe all that garbage yep.